tell us a bit about yourself. I mean, um, where where did you grow up? Um, where did you? Um, I, I, I don't think property has been the only thing you've done. No, um, kind of got a bit of a past in a good way, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I grew up in Berkshire, so just outside of Windsor, and you know, I been there grew up there was born just in Surrey actually and my parents moved I think when I was like six or seven days old or something like that um because they they are actually um they own an old people's home in Berkshire so that's right. always kind of been in my DNA uh so that's why I kind of grew up in that area in that setting but my parents and my family are actually from originally from Mauritius mm. the son um and I was very fortunate enough when I was a little boy uh, to go there when I was about eight years old with my sister and I. So we spent a couple, about two or three years there, just trying to learn the culture, trying to learn the language. So um, that's really a little bit about my background. Um, but at the time when I lived in Mauritius, I don't think I appreciated it as much. I was a young boy. I, I They're very focused on education over there. Mm. And I wasn't, I wasn't that academic when I went to school. Um, I wanted to do sport. I wanted to be outdoors. I was very creative. Um, and unfortunately, when I went to school in Mauritius, it wasn't really celebrated there. So I was very eager to come back. But now looking back at it, I had a great opportunity. I learned French, which essentially is is kind of like my mother tongue, really. So um, it was a great opportunity back then. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've been to Mauritius. It's a fabulous place and very, very sophisticated and high quality of everything, isn't it? I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a massive business hub and everything. I think, yeah, just because of where it is, you know, it's one of those places that it, it's such a small island. I think there literally is like about less than kind of a million and a half people. There's not that many people, but where it is, it's just center to everything. So it's off the coast of Madagascar, off the coast of Africa. It's very near to Australia, you know, it's not far from Australia. It's not far from India. Um, so it's kind of like the hub where a lot of businesses go there to set up. There's a lot of accountancy places there. There's just, I was so surprised to see how many businesses actually like function from Mauritius. Uh, but it's, it's a great place. And it is one of those places where, you know, I do get the opportunity to go back once in a while because I do have some family there. So I think the last time I was there was a few years ago and I went with my sister and we're obviously a little bit older than we were when we lived there. Um, I have a nephew now, so we took him and kind of be walking around and we just thought it's so scenic and it's so beautiful. It is literally like what you see in the postcards. I mean, you've been there, you, you would know. And you kind of just have to take it all in because as quiet and remote as it is, it's such a beautiful place. And it's really one of those places where you can go and switch off quite a lot. So I just wish it wasn't that far. Yeah, it is. A, a, I think I think that it's a sort of is it a twelve-hour flight. Twelve-hour flight. 12 yeah, hour yeah, flight. yeah, yeah. So, but you, um, when you when you left school, you you went into the um, the music industry. Is that right? I did. I did. I I kind of just really carved out a career for myself because. Um, I actually went to university and studied uh, modern languages and business mm -hmm. management. That was the first degree that I did. And I got the opportunity. That's where the real taste for like kind of living abroad came from because and exploring abroad because I spent a year in France in Marseille teaching, oh. teaching English. And I was probably about 20, but I just, out of all the jobs that I've ever done, it was one of the most rewarding careers that I've had because, um, I was living on my own in, in front. And it's really, uh, even though you go to university, um, to kind of become independent. Um, it's the one place where you really go, you know, I was abroad, I had no one that I knew around me. It was a complete new setting. Um, and even though I spoke French, it was a completely different ball game living in a French, island, well, French country. Um, and then being in a school as well, trying to teach young kids English, it was just such a great experience. So once I finished that, I kind of panicked a little bit. I was like, what the hell am I gonna do next? Because I didn't really think of the career after because I always knew I wanted to be creative, but um, and and I wanted to be kind of in the entertainment and TV industry. But when I went to school, it wasn't really encouraged. You know, it was very kind of straight laced and it was very kind of formal. Right, if you want to do business, you go do business. If you want to go and be an accountant, you go be a lawyer, whatever. And it was that was really the only thing that was encouraged. So deep down, I always knew that I wanted to be in TV um, and music, but because I didn't know the avenues to explore, I kind of panicked once I graduated and panicked a lot. And overnight, 
I remember once we were graduating, one of my friends was doing a graduate diploma in law, which is a three year law course combined into one. And I thought, I woke up the next day, I was like, you know, that's, that's exactly what I want to do. Had no desire to study law, had no, nothing, but I did it. I, and I did a three year course combined into one. It was the hardest year of my life, just studying, but now I look back on it, I learned so much from it. But you know, after that, you go into training and you study for another year when you training contract. And I just was like, I think I was about 22 at the time. And I just thought, do I see myself doing this in five or 10 years, let alone 20? And the answer was no. Um, so much to my mum's dismay, I was like, I'm leaving, I'm not doing law school. So she was like, you have to get a job. And then I think at that point, I was really like, what do I want to do? What, what is it that I want to explore myself? into and it was the music industry that's where I found myself I got an unpaid internship um, at a record label and um, I was kind of doing it for two years unpaid but I was getting so much experience mm -hmm. in that industry because that's the industry that I wanted to get into and to explore a bit more so um, that's where the whole music thing came about and from then I was able to climb the ladder and just kind of develop in my career and in my skill set as well. And you worked with Lulu and take that did you, it must that that sort of famous number one single that they did was that that was before your time i imagine oh uh, yeah i think relight <laughs> relight my fire which you're referring to was probably yeah. in, in 1998 so but i mean it it's it, lulu is is one of uh someone that i've worked with for the last kind of eight nine years really and she, she's a very close friend in terms of we still work closely together and she's a bit like a mentor to me because mm. i think subconsciously i've just watched her for the last few years and i've watched her work with the boys and, and other people in the industry as well. And when you're looking and when you're working with people of such a high caliber in terms of not just their names, but in terms of experience, mm. you really just kind of subconsciously take it all in. Mm. So whether, you know, experience, you can't buy experience. That's one of the sayings that I know my mum has always taught me and my dad. And, and especially with working with, with musicians like that, you can't buy experience because it teaches you so much. So just kind of sitting there and watching them in front of camera, on stage, how they act with people, um, just the level of professionalism that comes with the job. I think subconsciously I was kind of inhaling as much as I can. Um, so it's taught me a lot in the last kind of decade working in the music industry with them. And Billy Ocean was another one? Billy Ocean, yeah, he's, he's a great um, kind of influence in my life as well. He's, he's a family friend and I've done some you know, traveling with him, working with him. Um, and again, it's just, he's such a gentleman. Mm. Um, and, you know, he's been going, you know, for decades. Yeah. Uh, and just really, you know, he's probably at the, even though he's much older and he started off in the 70s and the 80s, you know, still now, I think he had a, a number one album, which is unheard of um, recently. And he's still selling out tours and stuff like that. But yet one of the things that I take away from it the most is he is, probably the most humble person that I've met in this industry. Um, he's very much, he does his job and then he just goes home and he, he's very chilled out like that. And it's, it's really good for me as an individual to be surrounded by, by people like that because you could also fall into the other category, category where um, you know, the music industry is all about partying and having fun. So there's two sides of it where you just really have to discipline yourself and figure out this is just a job. This is not gonna be my lifestyle um because if it does become your lifestyle it could potentially be dangerous yeah yeah no I can I can I can see that that's happened with some other people and yeah. how did you how did the transition from when did you did, did did that begin to sort of did you begin to think I've done enough of that or did you think actually um did television presenting come along um you know how did you make the transition TV, TV was actually the first thing that I always wanted to do Mm -hmm. Ever since I was a little boy, it was always the one thing that I just knew, almost like I, I pictured myself doing it. Mm -hmm. And I really just thought, this is what I want to do. And I think it really just started off from a very young age. And I think, you know, one of the, the questions that I, I really kind of asked my mum when I was probably about, I think she said I was about five and a half, six um and I turned around to her and I said why doesn't there why isn't there anyone that looks like me on television and unfortunately you know I think she was trying to find every answer under the sun and she couldn't because you know representation is such a big thing and I really just made it kind of my mission when I became a teenager it was still inside of me like I wanted to be on tv 
and all the people that are closest to me know that but I really struggled um, in my teenage years, uh, growing up in my 20s, um, just for every single reason, um, you know, you could possibly think of. Uh, school wasn't easy. Mm. You know, I school wasn't easy for, for various reasons. I, I'm not, I was the kid that didn't always fit in. I never, I've never fit in, in groups. So I didn't fit in at school. I was bullied for, for looking a certain way, for being, you know, I, I wasn't the most attractive kid. I was slightly overweight. Um, so, so it was really hard and confidence wise, it really took a toll on me just being a person of color, being overweight, not being so attractive. And I was the only Brown kid in school. So that really kind of affected me. And I carried a lot of stuff that had happened to me, mm -hmm. uh, throughout my, my older teenage years and my twenties. So the first audition that I ever went to was when I was 18 and I auditioned for something on MTV, um, and I got quite far, but it came down to, uh, I mean, I, I, I still for this day, you know, th there was a lot of reasons, of, but I know the way that I looked, that my personality was there, but they weren't happy with the way that I looked. Um, so that really, and there was a couple of comments throughout the audition process that really kind of affected me. So I unfortunately was one of these people that just held on to that. Mm. And rather than move forward and try and make it better, I wasn't in that place mentally and physically. So I kind of just thought, right, that's it. I'm never doing this again. It's just too much. They don't want me. I'm never going to be good at this. So, which is why I kind of focused on the, on the music stuff because mm. I was able to still be creative, but help someone else. And then as I was kind of growing older in my twenties, um, it just gave me more of a bit of a confidence boost. Cause that's my late twenties is when I really discovered who I was. I became comfortable with my skin. I became color with, uh, comfortable with, with, with the skin that I was in, in terms of color. I just finally accepted myself um, for being a person of color. The, and then up to that time, you know, I still called names and, and, and wasn't getting jobs because of the fact that I was a person of color. So it really affected me. And I think it was when I was like 30, 29, 30. And I was like, when am I gonna stop? When am I gonna stop and just do this? If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this now. Um, so I really just, kind of worked on myself, worked on my mental health, worked on just bettering myself in terms of development. I got into fitness. I got into discovering a, a healthy relationship with food because that was always my struggle as well. Just, it's really difficult kind of being a young man and a young woman in, in society today. Luckily for me, I didn't have all that social media and stuff back then. You know, Facebook was just about coming up, but I was very lucky to be a teenager without all that stuff. God, I, I really give teenagers you know credit for, for doing that now because now it's just you know body dysmorphia and all that stuff is just such a huge thing in society today so I was lucky I didn't have all that but I was able to to get over that stuff by kind of self-discovery as such and my confidence grew and then when I was about 30 31 I just went for it and I just thought now it's now or never um and I was happy and comfortable with who I am uh, and just put myself forward. So that's where the whole TV stuff kind of happened. I ironically, when I was like the ugly duckling, when literally I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror in my twenties. And then I became, uh, I started modeling a little bit. Mm. Um, and I was like, how am I getting these? I, yet to this day, I look back on some of the, the jobs that I've had. So I've done some commercials for Samsung and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, when I'm on set, I'm, I'm literally thinking they've hired me uh to to be in their campaign but i'm like any minute now someone's gonna come and be like he's a fraud he's not a model like that's i've always been conscious of that but touch words they worked out quite well and um from there i just kind of grew a bit of confidence and and just realized i want to do this for the greater good i want to help other people uh, you know when people hopefully see themselves in me um so from there on small little jobs started coming from the tv stuff and it's all about experience mm. it really is all about experience which i was saying to you earlier on so it wasn't just i decided overnight that I was going to be a tv presenter i've been doing this since i was 18 years old but i've had to have coaching i've had to have speech lessons i've had to have dialect lessons i've had to have improv you know i've even done acting lessons because there's so much you need to figure out when you're in front of the camera and delivery as well so it's been a real big work in progress. 
Wow, gosh, yeah. Uh, and I mean, the, all your people, all that knowledge of dealing with people that you learned in the record, that mm. all, all those different facets you've just talked about, yeah. uh, feeds into being a TV presenter on Place in the Sun, which yeah. is where we find you now. Yes. And, um, um, and, and so tell us, um, have you had a chance to go anywhere yet? Um, you know, t yeah. tell us how that has started. So my first show that I did, which was um, it was last year, 2020, right? When 2021, uh, 2020, and for everyone, the the the, the pandemic, the, the year that we had last year was just tough for every single person. So you know, I went for a phase of not working. I was working in the music industry, and then literally since March, it just completely stopped. So I was out there, and and then I got the opportunity a few months later to be part of the show, which was. A blessing. The day I got the call, I was just ecstatic, and I literally was like a Cheshire cat. I couldn't stop smiling. Um, but then it then became a reality. So I got the news, and I was like, "Right, we, ha you know, your first show is coming up." And I was like, "Oh wow!" In a pandemic, but obviously there were so many things to explore in terms of filming, given the fact that it was COVID and traveling. So we were able to go out for my first show in November, uh, which was to Gandia in Spain, and it was. It was just an amazing experience um, for me and and for the house hunters as well that I got. They were a great couple, and um, we just found some great homes. And it was it was a great great experience to film with them. And we should have you know you've, your background also. There's the there's the property thread that yeah. um, you know you've got that expertise as well. And yeah. you've dabbled in a bit of property development. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that my my parents and my mum always kind of installed in me was you need to, if you're going to do this music industry, we all know what the industry is like. It's very unstable. Whatever career you're in, you know, it's not that stable, especially if you're in the music industry, because one day you can be working and, and the next day there's nothing. So I was always encouraged from a very young age to try and invest in something. So um, the first property that I did was in Reading. Um, and I just built up my experience from there, which is a university town. And I bought it in my 20s, my early 20s, but it's very easy to get mortgages back then. Yeah. Um, they weren't asking as many questions as they do now. I think now they want your blood type. They want to know what you had for dinner. They want to know all that stuff. But back then it was kind of like, do you have a job? Yes. Can you pay your mortgage? Yes. Good. Here you go. And it was a very small property. It was a terrace property. Um, but what I was able to do was kind of build it with, I didn't do it kind of, I needed someone kind of to mentor me. So I was very lucky that my parents, my mum especially had that experience. So the area was great, tick. Uh, the property we could develop and turn it into a four bedroom house for students. And wow. it, was, it was kind of a great experience. And then after that, I was just, I had a bit of like the bug. I just wanted to do it even more. And I knew it was kind of like, great. Okay, I, I might be good at this. And then lo and behold, it started happening progressively. But, it, you know, the experience came again, that word experience, but it was, you know, you make some mistakes you, and, and you learn from it. So it's um, I've been doing it for the last, I'd say, 10 years um, on and off and just kind of I love I think one of the, the greatest things that I've been able to do with A Place in the Sun moving forward, but also in the music industry, I've traveled so much and I've been able to see interiors and different properties that I, I would never dream of, of seeing. Mm -hmm. So it's really given, I've, I've almost like got a little bank in the back of my head that just stores little things. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to property, I kind of look at it like an empty shell now, which is why it's great for me to be on this show because I'm able to really advise people. Um, sometimes you have, you know, in your head what you're looking for. And then when you necessarily, when you see a property, it's not necessarily what you think it may be, but, I think sometimes it's always good to have someone else that could be like, right, so this is what you want, but how about we develop it into this? So it's all about kind of um, give or take, and and um, which is why I'm so excited to be a part of this show as well, because it's just, I can put some of my skills and, and help other people as well. But it's such a different, isn't it? As you know, uh, buying for as an investment is such a different proposition to the place in the sun buyer who are very yeah. much buying for their yes. their lifestyle, their their dream, their retirement, their their new second career, whatever. And yeah. um, it's a different set of criteria, isn't it? It is, and I think in terms of sometimes you need someone that's a bit impartial. So with properties, I'm one of those people that I'm kind of like 
all my friends come to me, people that don't, you know, they might just say, talk to Lee because he, he, he kind of, I mean, I like to think I know what I'm talking about, but I still make a hell of a mistakes. But um, I'm one of those people that I kind of understand what people are looking for. Mm-hmm. And I kind of listen to them. And that's what the great thing about being on the show, because we meet the house hunters before we film, just to really understand what they're looking for. Because forgetting the fact that you're filming for Channel 4, forgetting the fact that you're making a show, this is their dream. We're trying to make their dream a reality. So you have to listen for the small parts. You have to listen for what they want, whether it's a two bedroom or a two bathroom. And we find them a three bedroom with a two bathroom. So it's about giving them possibilities that they possibly haven't thought of. Yeah. But kind of expanding their horizons a bit. So I think it's great that myself or the other presenters, I think one of the best things that we do is we do listen and we try and kind of advise them progressively as we go along. That definitely comes across. I've interviewed so many people who've been on the program who've said yeah. that they really, you know, you can see that honing process and not not all as estate agents actually do that in the, in the real world, you know, so uh, it's a it is a real um, value thing of the show. Um, so what so your your um, when's your first ep- your first episodes due to go out, um, I think, um, very shortly. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, the new series comes out in April. Uh, my episode comes out on May the 10th which I'm very excited about. Um, and you've got your, 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 you know, you could have a very busy summer and autumn traveling. It, you, you know, you, it, you're probably, you might be dispatched at short notice to any number of places. Yeah, I think, you know, given the pandemic and given, given the situation kind of globally at the moment, um, the production company in Channel 4, we've been, they've been very careful and kind of just sending us off and just being mindful of the fact that, you know, there is a pandemic at hand here. So um, it's just kind of, the whole team is just looking out for any sign for us ready to go. Um, you know, because we are working, it's not, you know, a holiday when we go away, we are fully nine till the end of the day working for, and finding these homes for people. So I think it will be imminent when we do get the chance to travel. So I, I, I do have my suitcases out ready to go just in case I get the call. <laughs> But you've also got a few other little things going on. You you do you've got a fashion line, haven't you? Yeah, um, fashion. I, I've always um, kind of been very interested in fashion, and just kind of buying clothes is one of my guilty pleasures. Especially like I was one of these people that during lockdown, and I moved. I was the place that I'm in now is somewhere that I purchased three years ago, and you know we're talking about trial and error. So this was a grade two listed property that I just thought, yeah, I've been here within six months. It needed a hell of a lot of work and it took me three years. So um, I just moved beginning of the pandemic last year and I was like, oh my God, I have so much stuff that literally when I was moving here, I just realized how much stuff I had. And then during the pandemic, I just realized I literally wear the same thing every single day. Like what the hell am I doing with all these clothes? Um, so, so it was a kind of real realization, but I've always been interested in, in, in fashion and seeing what's out there. But what I wanted to create and for the last two years in the making was just create kind of a sustainable uh, line that is gender neutral, that people could wear as well, that we've, um, I previously went to Italy two years ago to help to find materials and stuff like that. Um, but I've just slowly worked on it. And I had all this time during last year to just put my, my all into it. Um, so that's coming out in May as well, mid-May. So it's, it's been a long time in the making, but it, it celebrates kind of, it's not just a, a clothing line that is out there. It's basically, it celebrates diversity. We're, we're giving some of the proceeds back to a children's charity, uh, which I'm partnering up with because the whole point of the brand is to help kids have a better future, um, whether that's in the UK or globally as well. It's just to have kind of help the deprived and encourage people um and the, it, the the collection celebrates neutral tones and color as well so and, and different body shapes which we all need because we all not stick thin you know so um it's something that i've been i'm very proud to, to kind of put my name to um because a lot of work has gone into it so we're just on our little finishing touches at the moment sounds great will we be able to see any, you wearing any of it on the tv show i will be yeah i'm actually wearing some of it now <laughs> Ah, I saw a really lovely sh- pattern shirt. I think you might be wearing in the episode. Oh, I've seen some promotional material, which right. I really liked. Yeah, was right. that one of yours? That wasn't. That wasn't. But I'm doing something even better than that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brilliant! So um, you've got a, you've got a lot going on, and um, 
And, and, where, and you live now in um, West London, is that right? In West London, yeah. I've, I've lived in London for the last kind of um, uh, 12 years now. Um, so yeah, London, London is home. Brilliant, right. Well, um, we're gonna, um, and, and, I mean, a place in the sun, uh, I mean, what, what are you, what's, um, what are you most excited about, about sort of uh, in the next few months about the show? I mean, what, what's, uh, I know it's hard work you mentioned and it's gonna be sort of a bit, sort of the travel is gonna be a bit touch and go, but what's, what's the most exciting thing? Do you know what, genuinely, it's, it's being part of such a kind of long-standing show. You know, I think the credits for A Place in the Sun speak for itself. And the fact that they've even considered me to be a part of this is incredible. And for me, I'm just genuinely excited about joining a team of presenters that are just all diverse and all different. And they're all great. We all offer something different. Um, and I'm just really kind of honoured and excited that I get to be a part of the whole thing. Um, so uh, I've started, you know, we started last year, but I, I, I can't wait to join everyone again. You know, it's not just, um, you know, the presenters, it's, it's the production team and the whole, the whole team um, behind the scenes as well that make the show happen, as well as the, head, the house hunters. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing everyone, meeting everyone and um, just being a part of it. Brilliant. Well, um, we were looking forward to watching lots of episodes. So thanks, Lee. No, thank you.